day. We pray that the lamp of God left his glory above to be a to the Calvary. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross. Till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross. And exchange it someday for a crown. Oh, that old rugged cross. So despised by the world has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear lamp of God left his glory above to be a to the Calvary. So I cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it some day for a crown. To that old rugged cross I will ever be true. It's shame my reproach gladly bear. He will call me someday to my home far away where his glory forever I'll share. I will cling to the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. The Christian faith is symbolized by a cross known as the crucifix. The song that I just sang on a hill far away explains everything as it is. It explains what transpired on that cross. There, Christ was crucified. That means he was nailed to the cross. He was nailed to the cross. I'd like to read for you Wikipedia's definition of what Easter is. Then I'll come to the significance of it in the Christian perspective proper. A lot of us, like I've said earlier on, are celebrating, but we don't know what we are celebrating. Wikipedia defines Easter. The question we want to answer is what is Easter? Easter is also called the Resurrection Sunday. The Resurrection Sunday is a Christian festival and cultural holiday commemorating the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Described in the New Testament as having occurred on the third day of his burial, following his crucifixion by the Romans at Calvary culminating in the passion of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Before the crucifixion, before the Easter celebration now that we are celebrating, that is what you call the Lent, a 40-day period of fasting, of prayer and penance. There are two schools of thought here. While some celebrate it solemnly, they observe the fast, the stations of the cross, and some even go as far as wanting to have the, feel the pain and have themselves 
the ceremony enacted on them. There is another school of thought that celebrates, that jubilates in this season. We'll come to the reason for the celebration. The reason is because our sins have been paid for. A price has been paid for us. The darkness of the world no more holds us because light has come into our lives and into the world. And that is why there is the celebration. We'll come to that. We just want to look at generally now, generically, what is the meaning of Easter. So it is observed by Christians. Its significance is the resurrection. Like we've said, it is preceded by a 40 days length for those who observe the length period. That is, they are trying to remember what happened when he went to the cross. And two days ago, we had the Good Friday. It was on that Good Friday that he was crucified. And another question that men ask is, what is good about a day that someone is crucified, that someone died? For us, the Christians, it is very, very significant. Very, very significant. Because that which the devil meant for evil is for our own good. We are beneficiaries of it. The Bible, the story of the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ starts in the very beginning. The Bible says that in the beginning, Genesis 1, 1, God created the heavens and the earth. And God now placed man in the garden of Eden, having communion with man. Gave man the, the dominion mandate. Genesis 2, 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress and keep it. And God gave man everything therein. And gave him the dominion mandate to take care of it, to tend it, to take care of it. We see the dominion mandate in Genesis 1, 28. 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he the male and female. And God blessed them. And God said, let them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. This is the mandate given to man. And the Bible says that in the cool of the day, God would always come and have communion with man. Having placed man in that garden, he gave man only one instruction, which is that he must not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and of the tree of life. We see that in Genesis 1, 16. And the Lord God commanded the man. We are trying to answer what is Easter? What is the celebration all about? Genesis 1, 16. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat thereof. When the day that is that is thereof, thou shalt surely die. So a, a man was put to take care of the garden, to replenish, to subdue, enjoy himself free of charge. But we see here in Genesis chapter 3, why the Easter, we are trying to explain what is Easter. Easter came about as a result of the fall of man in Genesis chapter 3. There man ate of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that God asked him not to eat. And when God came, God was not happy. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. We see from verse 11. God came and asked and said, because Verse 9, God liked to commune with man. You will see that in verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. God will always come and commune with Adam and Eve and his wife. But in this particular time, after they have eaten of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they hid themselves. And God was calling and they were not answering. Why? <laughs> Genesis 3, 7. Because the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were both naked. And so they sewed fig nicks and hid themselves. 
And when God called them, they were not answering. And God knew what had happened. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Adam, where art thou? So this Easter season, God is calling, Where are you? As he called Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, he is calling you. It is not a holiday for you to just eat, sleep, visit friends, uh, wash your clothes, just relax. It is God reaching out to you, calling out to you, asking, where are you? That is, if you do not yet already know him, if you are not in fellowship with him, it is about fellowship. It is about communion. Verse 10 of Genesis 3.10. And Adam said, I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? And he asked, has thou eaten of the tree wherefore I commanded thee? And the punishment was given. For the serpent, verse 14, he said, because you have done this, he said, you are cast above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thou shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. That was the punishment meted out to the serpent. And for the woman, same for the serpent in verse 15. He said, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his hair. And unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. You see here where the agony of the woman giving birth comes from. Where she cries, where she's in pain, where she's not finding it easy at all. That is for those who do not yet know him. It is as a result of the sin that was committed in the Garden of Eden. And to Adam... The, to the woman, 16, I read again. He said, unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of, cause is the ground for thy sake. Thorns and teasels it shall bring forth. This is where man's endless labor came from. The climax of it is that God drove them from the Garden of Eden. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. 24, Genesis 3, 24. So he drove out the man. And he placed on the east of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Man was driven from the garden and lost communion. But God so loved the world. God so loved mankind. John 3.16, that he sent his only begotten son Jesus to make remedy, to reconcile us to himself. And this is what Easter is all about. A reconciliation of fallen mankind to its original state, to its maker, where we now have fellowship with him. This is the story of the Easter season. We see the passion of the cross. The Lenten season describes the suffering. The significance of the death is that he rose again. Good Friday, he went, he died. In between Genesis and the New Testament, God made provision for man. And that is with the killing of animal. If you sin, you can kill, even the smallest person can kill a dove. Depending on your ability. But when men bastardize that, God became angry. Say, no, I no more want the, the sacrifice of animals I no more want the sacrifice of animal and he sent his only begotten son Jesus to die on the cross for us so that on that 
by the token of his death and the blood that was shed, no more sacrifice, no more sacrifice. Since the death of Jesus Christ, no more sacrifice. There is no other sacrifice than that blood. That blood is ever fresh, ever fresh. And it was on that Good Friday that he was nailed. And that blood that was shed became a sacrifice and atonement for us. He says, on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. The emblem of suffering and shame. Our suffering and our shame. And I love that old cross. Where that they are rest and best. For, all, for a world of lost sinners was slain. A world of lost sinners. He died for you and for me. To reconcile us. To bring us back to that original state. That is why the Friday is called a good Friday. Because on that day. Man got a reconciliation with his maker. And then he was buried. And on the third day, he arose. Easter Sunday is the climax of that which was done on the cross. That is the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is celebrated by, with church services. All over now, there's church services going on for the Easter season. It's a time for family reconciliation, family meeting, picnicking, Easter decoration, gift giving. It's also um, observed with prayer, all night vigil, and the sunrise service that we have now. Tomorrow there will be the meeting of the disciples of Christ on the mount. So these are the highlights. Christianity also looks at the Easter season as beginning with the Easter Sunday. From the Easter Sunday, they begin to count 50 days. And that 50 days is known as the Pentecost Sunday. So that is when the Easter season starts proper. So Easter and related holidays are movable. That means there's no fixed date. Unlike Christmas, where we have Christmas signifies the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as a child for you and for me. While Easter celebrates, he's going to the cross for you and for me, to die on the cross for you and for me. While December is not, is, is not movable, it is fixed. We've said, of course, that that is not the exact date of the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But church council agreed to have one particular day to celebrate. So they chose Sunday, no, not Sunday, December the 25th. It can fall on a Sunday, on a Monday, or on a Tuesday. But the date is fixed. But Easter is not fixed. We are looking at what is Easter. There is a, 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 a celebration. Holidays have been given for it. For those of us who don't know why we are holidaying, why we are celebrating, we are explaining so Easter holiday is not fixed. It is movable. And it can fall on any day, on a Sunday, on a, Mon on a, on a Monday, on a Tuesday. It falls like that. So, but we have the days that are fixed. That's the Friday, Good Friday, and the Sunday, the Resurrection Day. So Easter is also called the Resurrection Day. So this is what Easter is all about. I'd like to now zero on the meaning, the significance. I have explained it, but let me repeat again because of the importance of it. That the death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is to reconcile you and me to our maker. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave. He gave us his only begotten son, Jesus, that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. We have explained using Genesis in the beginning how God created the heavens and the earth, how he created man, male and female, how he placed them in the garden, how he had fellowship with them, how men fell in Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, the remedy is in Easter. That fellowship that was lost is restored now with the death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the cross. The blood of Jesus reconciles us to him. Yes, 
the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. I'd like to give you a reading assignment. Those of you that don't know Jesus, you know him better, you know him the more. We always advise that you start with the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It is the recording of the teachings of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you begin to see the resurrection story. The story of Easter starts from where Judas agreed to betray Jesus. From Genesis, Matthew 26, a reading assignment, we can't read it all for the sake of our time. Matthew 26, but by God's grace, we'll pick, continue with this to give you a proper explanation. But this now is a generic explanation of what Easter is all about. So for proper understanding, you have a Bible, go to Matthew chapter number 26. Matthew 26, you see that the plot against Jesus. Had they plotted against him, not knowing that it is for our good. How Jesus was anointed at Bethany. And how Judas agreed to betray Jesus. These are the highlights of the Easter season. Judas agreed to betray Jesus. Because in a group of 12, there was no difference. You couldn't tell who was the master from um, the follower. Or like today, when you go to the church service, you can tell who is the set man. Mainly you enter. You see it's different, everything different. You know, sir, this one I be a senior pastor. This one I be this. With Jesus, there was nothing like senior pastor. They were all alike, the same. Dressing and all. It had to take Jesus, a Judas, to betray him. Mm -hmm. He said, the person I kiss is the person. Mm -hmm. Because they couldn't they tell who was who. So we have the Lord's Supper. These are the highlights of the Easter season. We'll come to all of those in future teachings. But for now, we are explaining generically what is Easter. So you have the Lord's Supper. Then Jesus predicts Peter's denial in 31. That's um, Matthew 26, 31 to 35. Then we see where Jesus went to pray in Gethsemane. You know, all these things, before I went to Jerusalem, it was, the Bible is like a story. You believe, but you say, as ah, I this, I this, is this possible? But I tell you, it is real. It is real. You can't go to Jerusalem and come back the same. Everything is just real. So it is not fiction. It is not a fable. It is true. Jesus prays in Gethsemane. You see that in Matthew 26, 36 to 46. I hope you have your paper and Bible. Our, our, our um, church on the air is basically a teaching service. Mm -hmm. We are not here to entertain you. We are here to inform you, to educate you, to reconcile you, to your maker, to encourage you, to strengthen you, to give you hope. And you don't do that just by hearing. You take your paper and your Bible, you write, and then you go back and search the scriptures and reinforce the teaching. If possible, Record. Like we will record because all that I have said nice, I didn't plan them. We just come prepared to the studio. Read vastly, get ready. And so at least we take over. And he does. So when we are seven, we go back. I have to listen over and over and over again. Say, ah, I said this. Oh, yeah. So we go back and teach ourselves again, listening to the teachings as done by the Holy Spirit. So record, listen. Be a Bible student. Search the scriptures. When you do, you will not be carried away by every wind of doctrine. No, you'll be stabilized. So in Matthew 26, 36 to 46, there he prayed. The main stations of the cross, the Easter story begins from when Jesus was arrested, our Lord and Savior. You see the story of that in Matthew 26 from verse 47. From verse 47, you see how he was arrested. You see how he was brought before the council. Verse 57 to 68. 
You see how, true to his prophecy, Peter disowned Jesus in 69 to 75. Matthew 26, 69 to 75. Of course, Judah hangs himself in Matthew 27. Then Jesus was brought before Pilate, but he didn't utter a word. Then the crucifixion proper. You will see it in Matthew 27, 32. Matthew 27, 32, where he was hung on the cross of Calvary. That is where we have the Good Friday. We've explained why is it good? It is good because there he came to save you and me. He came to wipe away our tears. He came to give us joy. He came to give us peace. He came because in this world, John 10, 10, the thief comes not only, he comes only to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But he, Christ Jesus, has come, and we may have life and have it more abundantly. So in Christ Jesus, we receive um, life more abundantly. The death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is recorded in Matthew 27, 45 to 46. I must stop now. We see his burial in 57. We see his resurrection in 28. Up on the hill, he arose with a mighty triumph over all. He arose. He arose. He arose. Our Jesus is no more on the tomb. He has risen. He's not on the cross. He has risen because it's only an emblem. It's just a symbol, you see. This is Christianity, but he has left and is right now seated at the right hand of God, interceding for you and for me. So he came for you and for me. Are you other than you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? He came for you. He came to give you joy and peace. You may repeat after me. Acceptance of this great sacrifice. You see, most times we find it difficult because it is so simple. To just say, forgive me my sin. Forgive me my sin, that's all. He paid the price. There is a film called The Passion of the Christ. Go and watch it. You see how he was flogged, how he was beaten. You see that? No be beaten at all, at all. But just make it easy for you. You don't pay the price. You don't need to pay price again. All you need to do is just to accept. Acknowledge your sin. Someone say, me, I'm not a sinner. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. Too. Psalm 51 says that, in sin did my mother conceive me. And if you say no, who tells the child to buy the mother in mischief and look at her? Who teaches the child to do five fingers like this? <laughs> in Africa, there's this five finger like this that the child would always do. <laughs> they call it waka. That means your mother abuse. Who taught the child all the bad, bad things? The sin nature that is inherent in man. So when you say, Lord Jesus, forgive me, he comes in and he washes away those sins. And all you need to do after that is to get a Bible, be a Bible student. The Bible is God talking to you. The revelation of Jesus Christ, it is God himself speaking to you. When you make it your standard for living, your life can never, never remain the same again. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, you must find a Bible to believe in church to attend. Church on the air does not make for a church. We are online, we are on radio, but you need a Bible believing church where there's a physical pastor where you have your family to go there by. The studio line to call 070-5086-3939. The phone. Studio phone. Studio phone. Would like to receive your questions, your comments, your contributions. If you have any, we are looking at what is what is Easter. Zero seven zero five zero eight six three nine three nine is the studio line for your number one radio station, Jordan ninety three point nine FM. Your voice and my voice. The voice of the people and the very, very special voice. Okay. Another studio line to call is 
0901-8425517. Would like to hear from you. Thank you very much for streamlining. Thank you for tuning in. 090-24-20-44-15 is Jordan's marketing line. This program is subject to sponsorship. It is also the line that you can call 090-24-20-44-15 is the line that you can call to make your adverts. Jordan is a far-reaching station. God bless you. 070-5086-3939. Pastor Mrs. Magdalene Osada is in the house. Pastor Magdalene, good afternoon. Good afternoon. There's Happy a call Easter coming Easter. in. Happy Easter. Hello. <laughs> the line has cut off. Please call back. Pastor Magdalene, Happy Easter to you. Also the same one. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for this uh, uh, teaching. I'm highly blessed. And I believe all our fans over there, <coughs> the meaning, the significance of uh, Easter. Thank God so much for the in-depth teaching, for enlightening us so that we know what shit, what we don't know. We don't serve what we don't know. We are not praising the unknown God. We are not worshiping the unknown God. So thank God for all the servants of God that He has sent into the world to preach and to teach this word of life to as many that are still in darkness so that they will be able to see the light of God in which Jesus Christ is the light of God. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And as many that are sitting in darkness by the reason of the light, which is Jesus Christ, who we are celebrating his death and his resurrection today, such a life will never be the same again. Because the Bible tells us that now that light has come, darkness has disappeared. Darkness will be nowhere to be found in our lives. Either it's a spiritual darkness, it's a physical darkness, it's a marital darkness, it's a material darkness. Whatsoever darkness we might have found ourselves in the past, now, by the reason of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's resurrection, such darkness can never have its way in our lives anymore. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us in the book of uh, in the book of Romans chapter three verse twenty three, it says, "For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God." According to what our mommy has been teaching us. Concerning the book of uh, uh, in the book of uh, Genesis, the incident that uh, took place between God and man, and man fell out of grace, and now there's another uh, uh, there, there, there is another man that is better than all men, which is uh, uh, which is around the one that can never die anymore, the one that whose death can never reign over his life, the man Jesus Christ has come to redeem us from the curse of the law. He has come to redeem us from the danger of hell, from the jaw of hell. He has come to, to make us reconcile back to our Father, which is God. And that is why what the Bible is saying, that for all have seen, all that we have seen, because we are all born as a sinner. We are all born as a sinner, but God is no longer expected each and every one of us to remain as a sinner, because God himself has made a provision for us to be saved from sinner to saint. God himself has made a provision, has made a sacrifice using his holy son, Jesus Christ, which we are celebrating his death and his resurrection in this, uh, in this season. So Jesus Christ is the resurrection who God has made for us to be free from the power of sin. And then all that we have seen, they will become short of the glory of God. When we accept and believe in the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we no longer be reckoned with as a sinner as we keep on walking in the light of God. And the Bible tells us that by the reason of his death and his resurrection, that the anger, the wrath 
and the displeasure of God was satisfied when Jesus Christ gave up the ghost on the cross of Calvary. The anger of God was turned away from man. Jesus Christ took our place in death. If his us, who could have died the death that Jesus Christ died? Because the Bible tells us that the uh, 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 whosoever sin, whosoever sin, we pay for it. But hearing the love of God that Jesus Christ so much show us by offering himself as a sacrifice for us, by taking our place, all the suffering, the death, Jesus Christ took it upon him. It would have been me, it would, it would have been you who would have uh, gone through this uh, suffering and then at the end of it died. So now, the Bible now tells us that there is no more condemnation to him that is in Christ there, eh? Jesus. If the wrath of God will be, uh, will, uh, uh, will be satisfied over your life, you have to give your life to Christ. You have to accept and believe in him. You have to worship him in spirit and in truth because God himself is worship, is, is, uh, uh, is looking for a true worshiper that will worship him in spirit and in truth. And Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to God the Father except through the Lord Savior, Jesus Christ. Although we might be practicing so many religions here on earth, those religions, they can only end here on earth. If those religions, can they take us? Can they reconcile us back to God in heaven and God will accept us? Can we see God on the last day? So what is the hope of all our different type of uh, religion? Can they give, can, can they, uh, uh, give us eternal life? So Jesus Christ is the eternal life that has come to uh, uh, that who has come to each and every one of us. The Bible says, as many that we believe, they will have eternal life. They will never be condemned. And what is our hope when we practice uh, various type of uh, religion which God might not uh, approve? But God did not want us to remain in darkness. God did not want us to be an ignorance of His grace, of His salvation. Of the sacrifice that he has made for us to be saved, to get out of darkness into his marvelous light. And then he wants us to get saved. He wants us to, to know the truth. He said, When you know the truth, the truth will make you free. The truth is found in Christ Jesus. Jesus made it clear. He said, I am the way. I am the way. He did not just only say, I will come and show you. I have come to show you the way. Oh, I have come to give you life. He said, I am the life. Whosoever believes in him will not perish, but he will have everlasting life, a life without end. Although it can end here on earth temporarily, but that life continues with God, eternity. So, we are, are we, the, uh, the question we have to ask ourselves, after practicing so many religions here on earth, where are we going to spend eternity? What is our hope? What is the hope you have? What is the hope I have? A songwriter says in, that... What is the hope you have? The kingdom mm -hmm. of God is it's the hope I have. The kingdom of God. We can enjoy here on earth. We can suffer here on earth. But at the end of both, where, where, where are you going to spend eternity? So let us have this uh, question in front of uh, in front of our mind, not just the back, because whatever is is at the back is uh, is forgotten. Let's have this uh, this question in front of our mind after the race here on earth. After practicing so many religious here on earth, what is our hope? And where are we going to spend eternity? May the, uh, may the Almighty God give us understanding of the true meaning of Easter in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want to briefly read the book of uh, Romans. Romans chapter 1, from verse 17. It says, For there is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. faith. God is expecting us to believe in Jesus Christ, whom he has sent to us by faith. The just shall live by faith. Then, in verse 18, he said, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. Sinners that have heard the word of God, they don't want to repent. We are still questioning God's authority. Why? Why is that? Why? Who sent it to go my death? Who sent God to give me his only son to come and die for my sin? Do I tell him that I'm a sinner? Most of us, we yeah, are uh, uh, questioning God's uh, authority. He said, the wrath of God, the anger of God has been revealed from heaven against our ungodliness. 
against all sinners who don't want to repent. And all unrighteousness, all unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So that's why I'm grateful to the Almighty God for the teaching of uh, this about uh, Easter, for us to know what we are celebrating. Are you celebrating who does not know you? Are you celebrating uh, the unknown God? So it's high time we sit down to examine ourselves and know who we are celebrating, the significance of uh, Easter. Does it really, does it, uh, how does it affect me? If, it, uh, if we are told that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, how does it affect me? Is it positively or negatively? So it is high time we examine ourselves. So in verse 19, it says, Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shewed it unto them. This is all of us now. Whatever God wants us to know about his, uh, about his lifestyle, they have been made manifest to us through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God has shown everything to us through Jesus. He said, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without an excuse. So after hearing about the death, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and we still pay no attention. It doesn't make me, it doesn't concern me. I think the popular uh, saying that it doesn't, it doesn't matter. And after hearing, seeing all the miracle, all the suffering, all the power that Jesus Christ uh, 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 demonstrated at the end, he said, hey, it doesn't matter. It has, that one has gone. It is a, it's, it's an old school. So God is saying that we are, we are without excuse. After hearing all this teaching, at the end of the day, we say it doesn't matter. The Bible is also saying to us, the Bible is the holy word of God, the infallible word of God that cannot fail because heaven and earth will pass away. The word of God can never pass away. If we are holding the truth of God, in vain and say it doesn't matter. So God is also saying to us, you are on your own, no, because whatever you are, eh, whatever I want you to know about me, I have revealed them to you. In fact, you are without excuse. He said, because in verse 21, he said, because that, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was a darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became a fool. I will have to stop here now. So after this, this sister has explained everything about God himself, about Jesus Christ, about we ourselves as human beings, who God uh, uh, sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to, to come and redeem us from, the, from his anger, from his wrath, from uh, 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 his, <laughs> his pleasure, so that his anger will no longer be kindled against us. According to what happened in the book of Genesis, because when man fall out of grace, God became uh, angry and pronounced a cause, a cause upon cause upon man. But today, by the reason of the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, as many that believe in Jesus Christ will be able to reconcile back to God, and that causes is broken by the reason of the blood of Jesus Christ. And then the judgment of God will now be replaced with what? With mercy and grace. And that is why the Bible tells us we are saved by grace, not by labor of words, so that we will not uh, boast. It's my prayer that as we celebrate Easter, that the Lord of God be turned away from our lives. We no longer be condemned as the Bible has assured us that henceforth no more condemnation to him that is in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. May the Holy Spirit of God give us understanding and true meaning of Easter in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. Amen and amen. The studio line to call. 070-5086-3939. 070-5086-3939. Comments, contributions, questions on this topic or on any other topic is welcome. That was Pastor Mrs. Magdalene Osadaye giving us more insight on what Easter is all about. The topic is, what is Easter? And we've taken time to look at 
the origin of man, how man fell in the Garden of Eden, how God made all things beautiful in Genesis 1.31, placed man there. In Genesis 1, 26, 27, he made them male and female. 28, gave them the dominion mandate. Genesis chapter 3, how man fell in the Garden of Eden and he was driven out. Then we come to the book of... Hello? Hello? Hello, good afternoon. We can hear you, good afternoon. Hello? Please call back. So we have explained in detail and given you a reading assignment from Matthew chapter 27. If you begin to read from Matthew chapter 26, you see there the account of the death, crucifixion and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's read to Matthew chapter number 28 where he met the disciples. So we want to say that it is a very, very significant occasion, the death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He demonstrated God's love for mankind by sending his only begotten son. We have tried to enumerate a few reasons why he died for us. First Timothy 1.15 Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Luke 19, 10, the Son of Man is come to seek and to save you and to save me. Next week we will continue. We are reconciled to him by his death and a lot of other reasons. We will look in depth into the Easter season proper, its meaning and its significance. Are you out there and you do not know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? would always like to make the altar call severally. Because John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. When Christ Jesus, we have life. We have it more abundantly. The peace you crave for is possible. You can find it in Christ Jesus. The money you want is in Christ Jesus. The happiness, the joy, the children, everything you want. Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else will be added unto you. What are you looking for? Turn to Jesus. He is the answer. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. It says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy landing, and I will give you rest. The rest you find is in Christ Jesus. Some think they can find it in things. It, you can't. But in Christ Jesus, you can't know, but you will not be happy. There will always be a void and emptiness that can only be filled by Jesus. And so, Father, we say thank you for the opportunity given to us to minister. Thank you for the Jordan family as a point of contact to everyone out there. Father, thank you because it is well with us all. Thank you because Jesus is the season, the reason for the season. And his resurrection power will touch every one of us as his quickening power. We quicken our life, quicken our circumstances, quicken all that consigns us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you very much for streamlining with us. My name is Pastor Mrs. Edith Atake, General Vasya Banner of Love Ministries International. Please do visit our YouTube channel. You type E D I T H A T A K E or Church on the Air Banner of Love Ministries International. Our account will pop up. Like, share, subscribe. On Facebook, we have five vibrant pages. Search the scriptures, nation building, where you pray and I pray. Church on the Air, Ministers of the Truth. Like, share. Thank you so very much for streamlining. God bless you. A very, very happy, happy, happy Easter celebration to you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. God bless you. Is it Chad? Okay, it's that to you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and there is nothing too hard for you to do. Nothing is too hard. Nothing is too hard. Nothing is too hard for you to do. 